Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Linda Reed, and everyone, welcome back to another skills webinar. We are being joined by, and I have to be really honest, by one of my clients and one of the amazing people that I like working with, Jenny DeLacy, who is here to talk to us about Facebook Live. Now, you have seen, might have seen recently that I put out the Facebook for Business course, but I don't touch live because this is what this lady knows and does. Um, I break all her rules. I go live from the car. <laughs> I ramble, I I don't, I, you know, we talk about things off the top of my head, but that works for me for Facebook Live. But what Jenny is here to do today is actually teach us how to make the most of Facebook Live, how to take the fear out of going live and how to make those tips about being unstoppable and going from unseen to unstoppable using Facebook Live. Now, Facebook, as we know, is... Um, loving live interactive engaging content and this is where Facebook live comes in so welcome Jenny thank you very much how exciting to be here I'm actually just writing notes that I want to come back to um, <laughs> when we have a <laughs> based on your introduction um, and it's great to be here I really feel um, pretty honored to um, be on a skills webinar oh. for the business 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 community I know they're, they're um, on the limited edition aren't they <laughs> yeah because I, I love they've been really practical so far I've learned some really amazing stuff um and so uh Linda are you happy for me to um just get stuck into yeah the content oh, I um, think we'll get stuck into the content we did have a question from Mark pre-webinar about profiles we might answer that one towards the end if you're happy with that because I'm sure as Jenny and I come along, you are going to have two marketers who spend most of their time on Facebook Yeah, come back to you with, with tips and advantages. Guys, I'm popping into the chat box now. There is a very, very special offer, and I'm popping in a couple of times today, from Jenny at the end of the course to be able to get a Facebook Live, join her Facebook Live Masterclass. But you're actually going to get a Facebook Live session with her, like a one-on-one -on -one planning oh, session wow. with her. This is phenomenal. Take her up on this offer. I cannot awesome. stress it enough. It's going to pop up. But, Jen, why Thank don't you, you very much. I will share my screen everybody and, and get this baby started um, let's get stuck into this now, i'm going to disappear off screen no i'll be on off screen but i'll be sharing the facebook live stream to thank a couple you. of groups while we're here thanks and if there's any questions that pop up i think i can probably get in and see i'll see should see them on chat yep I'll Guys, ask as questions go. throughout as we're going on chat or pop up, if you pop it into the q a thing we can even look like we're actually know what we're doing <laughs> <I love it. laughs> <laughs> well, look, welcome, welcome everybody who's here live. Welcome if you are watching the replay uh, later on. You even you're going to get a really cool PDF later on in the replay um, yes. email that takes you through what we do in this um, webinar today with links to all sorts of really cool resources that are free that are on my website. Um, so I want to take you through my five step system, and the reason that I want to do that today is that I want to demystify Facebook Live a little bit for us and give us. Um, tips and a bit of, uh, I guess, confidence around using it regularly and making sure we're getting the most from it. So just to give you a little bit of a background on me, I have been a learning and development professional for 25, more than 25 years now. Uh, so I have created programs for multiple groups of people, delivered those programs live and online as well over the years. And as online learning became more and more prevalent in corporate, uh, I was able to really make the most of being able to storyboard online learning and understand the mechanics of how to use video for learning and development. And what happened was I did a, a final learning and development contract with a really big organisation. It affected about 10,000 people. And what happened was it was great money, but it was really stressful. My kids and I are by ourselves and they were really reaching the age where I absolutely had to be more present for them. I couldn't work that many hours and there's very few part-time contracts at that level of, of L&D. Yeah. And so I tried to work out what do I really want to do with my life <laughs> and uh, I actually lent towards copywriting because I thought, oh, that's actually something I could do from home and I'm a really good writer and I could probably write for education yep. and training organizations so I did that for a little while what happened was of course anyone who knows me and I'm a bit I'm a lot like Linda in this regard you know I need to be with people I need to um, be with groups of people I'm better way way better I do my yes. best work when I'm interacting so I'd done some video through my um, copywriting business and I found it really easy I absolutely loved it it was I got oh 
10 times the engagement just in a little Facebook intro video that I did. And I did one for LinkedIn and I put a couple on my website and I found that it was pretty simple for me. I did have to dig around to get some instructions around editing and stuff like that. But essentially I was, you know, I found it pretty simple. I thought, this is great. And I told a few business friends, you should be using video. This is before Facebook Live. Yes. And they said, oh, no way. It's too hard. And I said, no, not really. Oh, no, it's too expensive. Mm, No, not really. I just use my phone. Um, (laughs) Oh, um, oh, no, it's, uh, you know, I hate the way I look and sound or I don't know how to do it or whatever. And so I thought, oh, you know, I'm onto something here because my natural instinct is to systemize something and make it templatable so we can kind of follow step by steps every time and not recreate stuff, right? So I started dabbling in really delving into learning about video marketing in particular, but obviously I'm all for education and training too with video, whether that's your clients or your team. And I decided to create a little system around it because it made it so much easier for me to create content throughout the busy minutiae of, you know, the day. If I have a, a system to follow, then I was more likely to create video content. And, I, and as an example, I created a, um, a Thinkific course for your intro video blueprint. Yep. It has seven videos in it. And I did that in about four hours. So I created the videos and got it all up online as a course because I have a system to follow. And that's what I want us to um, talk a little bit more about today. How can we make Facebook Live work for us in this way as well? Fantastic. Just a reminder, because there are a number of people, Jen, I've just checked in watching our Facebook live stream today. If you want to come and ask questions about Facebook uh, live today, head to the webinar page and register. Jenny and I will check in and we will look at the comments that are there and we'll come back and answer your questions. But seriously, guys, if you've got a chance to get into the webinar, Mm -hmm. head to this website. It's businessbusinessbusiness.com.au forward slash skills. And what I would like to say to everyone in doing this process today is whether you've done Facebook Live before or not, it's not as scary and you can stuff up and it's okay. Yeah. I and we're going to talk it. about some of those, you know, troubleshooting and, and, and basically what, what lessens the risk, I guess, of stuffing up yep. versus actually sometimes we just can't control the technology and we have to oh, just gosh, yes. stop <laughs> and <laughs> try again. <laughs> or, like um, we did today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And so um, I want to share some stats with you. Now, these are video overall, Mm -hmm. but, you know, with 2.2 billion active monthly users on Facebook, uh, you know, video is going to be 80% of the internet content that we consume by the end of this year, and that includes live content. So, you know, that to me means that people are expecting video. They're expecting to see it now. If I head to your website or your Facebook page and there's no video, it starts to feel like the 1990s. You know, we're we're sort of, you're going to get left behind. We've got to, you know, that time where our websites had to be mobile interactive. Well, video is a bit like that, that if you're not sharing video or explaining what you do on video, you are going to get left behind because people, consumers are starting to absolutely expect it. Yeah. Um, And I wanted to just share that... um, <clears throat> that bottom right-hand side one there, that viewers retain 95% of a message when they can watch it on a video compared to about 10% when I'm going to read it in a text post. And what I love about that is that we are all human to human and I loved watching the Meet Edgar session last yes. week where we market to humans. We're not business to business. We are actually human to human and that's exactly what that is. We are visual learners. About two-thirds of us are visual learners and so we love seeing people's body language, watching them speak, hearing their voice, the intonation, the, you know, emphasis yeah. people put on certain things. And so I just want to really encourage you to start seeing where video fits into your current marketing because we, um, and Facebook Live is not just a live video. We know that we can repurpose it and that's what we're going to get and to. And Jen, you know, one of the things I say to clients all the time is, you know, Facebook Live is that touchy feel. You know, I can reach through the screen and touch you oh, and feel yeah. you. Well, not they can't exactly, but that's what you're giving is the closest yeah. you possibly can to giving someone a handshake. That's right. And so it's, if it's second best thing to meeting people in person yeah. and it's free, apart from our time, you know, how can we leverage that? So I want us to move to a place where, you know, if we're on this webinar, you are already aware. So you're not down the bottom of my pyramid there. (laughs) Um, 
but certainly you might become aware you're a bit video curious but you're lacking confidence and those people haven't started yet so they're uncertain about yep. Facebook Live. They're sort of lurking in the shadows, perhaps watching other people's Facebook Lives and potentially being put off a little bit by seeing, you know, Facebook Live in the news feed that they don't feel is sort of on brand for that person or they're a bit confused about the messaging, someone going live for half an hour and not actually saying anything in particular. Um, so we're going we're gonna to knock that on the head today for sure. Um, inconsistent is a level where we start and stop. So there's no strategy or process around our Facebook Lives. We just sort of wait for maybe daily inspiration or, yep. um, you know, we feel that we're, we're going to um, wait for an event to happen. So we're inconsistent, sporadic sort of stuff. And that, that there's a bit of audience focus but not a lot because it's more about us at this point because we're trying it out. And a lot of people, I think, started with a Facebook Live. They got over that sort of hump. You know, they were stressed and they were nervous and they did it and they got cheered on by everybody. Everyone's yes. like, yeah, you're awesome. So great that you did that. I'm so proud of you. And then they didn't do another one. <laughs> and because they, they thought, oh, oh, you know, I've got over that now. I don't have to do yep. that again. Um, so that's sort of inconsistent in my pyramid to leverage there. And what happens after that is people... I've seen a lot of really overworked people who think they have to go live every day. Oh, God, yes. You know, still there's not, there might be a bit of strategy behind it, but, God, they're definitely visible. Mm. They're definitely there. We can see them. But, goodness me, they're overworked because they're constantly trying to come up with new content every day. Um, And what happens is they're creating Facebook posts, Facebook Live, Instagram posts, Twitter tweets, blog posts, and, and none of it is sort of connected. So they're really overworked. And that's a sort of a lack of a strategy and process as well. Um, and you know what happens with, and Linda, I would love your opinion on my, um, it's not based on any stats I can find, but what I th- believe I've seen is that as we go live every day, the viewership increases. So what happens is Facebook sees that people are interested in the first one, so it gets delivered to more people the next day when you go live again, plus the first people, plus so it compounds. Mm-hmm. And at about, I reckon, day four, people start going, oh, mm-hmm. and scrolling again. with yep. thumb. And that's a shame, I think. Look, it, is, it is a shame. And look, uh, as I said, it, you're saying that it's not based on any stats. Guys, my strategy about Facebook Live is you, and Jenny, you know it, I go live on a Friday night. It's a regular thing. There's an event about it. It's there on a Friday night. Unless you're doing a Facebook Live challenge, unless you're doing something where you're going to turn up for 28 days and just to provide really good information, mm. don't do it. I think it's too much work and I think we put ourselves time. yeah, under a lot of pressure to go live every day. What I love is that serial content that Facebook are, have really recommended yep. to us, which is going live at the same time pretty much every week and we're going to talk about that um, yep. shortly. But also I've seen people do a three-day series once yes. a month or something like that where they'll go, okay, three days to um, unlock your secret source or whatever. <laughs> and and um, there's three days and I know that, that, that I'm getting some content, content. And, and I'm happy to commit to, to watching three days in a row kind of thing. I'm going to say this to you people way about I say, what I say about every piece of marketing. Do not go live unless you have value to add. Yeah, yeah. Because there's nothing to do that. So I actually, Jenny, you will have seen it. Jenny's part of our presenters for the Small Business Skills Summit, guys. I did a Facebook Live this morning and then there was another question pop up two minutes later about what should we do with our offers. And I went live again, mm. twice within the day, but those those Facebook Lives happen to add value. Might have something to do with I have makeup and, uh, you know, look, look up. <laughs> you were ready to go. Yeah. I was ready to go live, <laughs> you know. Um, but the reality of it is... There's no point in me going live if I don't have any value. So even our Friday Night Cheers has a topic. It has a topic. It has an idea around it. It's the ones that go live and going, mm, yeah, I'm just having a conversation with you because I can. Mm. Don't create yeah. yourself that much work. And by the way, as much as people like to consume video and the stats are and the, the favour is on video right now, there are still those members of your community who like to read. There are still those members of your community who like an image. There are still those members of your community that like audio. And you can use live audio now as well too, which is phenomenal. Mm, yeah, those days about where you're that. not made up. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Um, and so when we, we move from that place of being overworked, um, let's say we all went live on a Friday night. We don't have a community as big as business, business, business to sort of gather questions to answer on a Friday like Linda does so I I really encourage you to be more strategic about your content planning 
Um, and so when we get to that leveraged place, it's because we are looking more broadly at our overall content and the value we want to provide um, and where Facebook Live fits into that picture. So now I know we're using repurpose.io or whatever yes. we downloaded two weeks ago, um, that Facebook Live goes to YouTube and it was really fast. Yeah, so fast. But what's so awesome is because I always put a lot of detail in my description, I didn't have to do anything on YouTube because it was already there. Yeah, yep, already done um, for you. So we're going to talk about the, the template that is in the paid course actually mm -hmm. lays out a script for Facebook Live and it includes, you know, going back and adding um, description stuff as well. Fantastic. So we want to get to that leveraged place where we're exactly. not wasting, <clears throat> wasting lots of time and energy. And these are the four ingredients that I cover in my five steps. So our mechanics, um, which, you know, I sometimes they fail you, sometimes it, they're just boxes to tick and you know what to do and you get it right and you don't have to worry about it. But it should never be the reason that you don't go live. Don't yes. panic about the, the mechanics because even, you know, seasoned professionals, um, you know, tech, have glitches. Yeah. Um, strategy is around, you know, what's the purpose overall of your content, but even more specifically about each Facebook Live, what's it for? What, why are you doing it? So we're going to co cover some of that. Um, messaging, um, I like to, I know that there's been a lot of challenges and they weren't Linda's challenges where people learn Facebook Live, but they, there's, no, there's no messaging or strategy in the challenge. So they just go live under a tree and talk about nothing in particular, which is a real shame because you know, it doesn't necessarily bolster that person's brand. And, and look, even if you're participating in one of my challenges, the whole point of it is, guys, if the topic doesn't fit, don't go live on it. Yeah, yeah. Really, it's really simple. Yeah. And then self-confidence, that sort of key ingredient, the X factor, comes from taking action, comes from being really clear about what you want to say and how you want to share it. Yes. Um, and not relying on the numbers. This is something we see time and time and time and time again, that people respond in real life to me that I had no idea were watching. They've never commented. They've never liked or reacted to a Facebook Live and yet they've watched them and they'll come back and talk to me about it, you know, in person when I see them and I think, oh, that's really weird. So if we rely on, oh, I need 20 eyeballs, I need five shares, I need 20,000 comments, we're going to really let ourselves down because that's actually not really how it works. No. And, um I just want to really encourage everybody not to stress too much about the numbers. Absolutely. So here are the five steps we're going to cover. <laughs> Plan, prepare, produce, publish and promote. And in the PDF that will be in with the replay, um, there's very specific steps under each of these with some links for you to find out some more if you, if you want to. Um, Joy put up a really, really good point just then, yeah. Jen, just in our comments. A very common to um, think no one is watching and then people come up and, and say, I love you, like, God, that happens to me still. Yeah, that's I think you've got no one watching and you sit there going, oh, how long should I go on for? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, a friend, I'm a friendless loser. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's watching. I'm sitting here, I've grabbed my glass of wine, no one <laughs> wants to talk to me. And then all of a sudden in the last five minutes when you think you're going to give up, all these people pop in yeah. or they watch it later. Yeah. Or you go and you sit there and you pour the second glass of wine on a Friday night and they start commenting and then you're like, now I've got to go back and comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, it is, it is very usual. Please, guys, do not think that that doesn't happen and that happens to the experts all the time. Yeah, and I think that that serial content and, and as we build viewership and let people know that we'll be live at a similar time and I still struggle with that because for me I wanted it to be Monday um, lunchtime ish that I was live that I share essentially what I wrote in the blog the week before or whatever which then will become the video so I don't have to yes. redo everything but even that is difficult but what can happen is that as we then say don't forget to join me next time same time next Friday for another topic um, of the week or yes. whatever. So people go, oh, right, right, because they may not have seen the event or, or whatever. Or they may not have a clue that you go live every time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, exactly. So let's talk about our planning Yay. step here. Um, please don't waste precious time and energy going, out, going live without any planning. Yes. I know that it's so tempting because it's live, because we've been made to believe that it's kind of rough around the edges and, you know, being off the cuff or daily inspiration is kind of a thing. I, just, I still think that the people who do that really well, share daily inspo, 
they're pretty strategic anyway because a lot of their content is already based on that stuff. So they're not really going off the cuff because they've probably already written about it or, you know, have all those, you know, quotes or whatever to rely on. So here's, here's how to do it. I really believe that you need to be audience focused. If you're not audience focused, I'm not quite sure why. You know, God, please don't do it for vanity's sake because oh my gosh, <laughs> it'll, fail, it'll fail you. So be audience focused. Who, who am I talking to? And even now I, I go live, I, I really feel like I'm not just speaking to one person. So who's that person who really needs me today that when I tell them whatever it is I'm going to educate or, or share that day, that it's going to make a difference for them. So yeah. what are they going to get out of watching? What's going to be different for them um, for, for watching this Facebook Live in its entirety or not? And then I decide, what is the purpose of this? Well, today I want to share three nerve-busting tips for camera confidence. When you're looking down the barrel of the camera versus being interviewed and looking off to the side, it can be confronting because it's like looking someone directly in the eye. So what's the purpose of your Facebook Live? For me, that's an example. I might go, well, I'm sharing three tips on nerve busting and mm -hmm. I write those little tips on a post it or whatever. So don't just go live without even thinking about what am I, you know, what is the purpose of this right now? Yes. Well, I want social proof that I run events. Oh, yeah, all right, if you, if you must. <laughs> If you must, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, or actually, I, I really want to uh, talk to this person who's next to me and make sure everybody knows that, that we're at this great event, but she just said something amazing and I want to share it or, yep. or whatever. Um, and where in your overall content plan and marketing does Facebook Live fit? Because every piece of content needs to earn its place. Yes. This is a really big lesson for me. You know, I'm so haphazard <laughs> uh, because I like to feel good and feeling good means I'm sharing, you know, I share stuff or I hang out with people, I feel good. But none of that actually really leads to any profit necessarily. So I've got to start being a bit more strategic about what am I sharing? What difference is this making? Is it sending traffic back where I need traffic on my Think If It courses or on my website or whatever? And so every piece of content is its place. Sorry, as part of that learning is, is your audience actually responding to Facebook Live? Mm. You know, if there is no point, and I'm going to say this as politely as I possibly can, there is no point in going Facebook Live if your audience isn't on Facebook in the first place. Yeah. You can try it all you like. But if they're not there, um, and I, I was talking to a client about this the other day, her audience are purely podcasts. They're, in, they're on their machines. They're, they're doing stuff. They're listening to podcasts. They're mm. not so much on Facebook Live watching Facebook Live videos. Mm. Uh, and I love the people who go live at 3.30 in the afternoon because mm. I sit there and go, well, you've just cut out half your market because I'm at school pickup right now. <laughs> yeah. And, look, we, we have to make it work for us, but I, yeah. the stats say actually 7 p.m. is really great for interaction. Right. Yep. Awesome. But 8, but eight o'clock is better for viewing, which is <gasps> interesting. So people will watch without particularly commenting at about eight o'clock because they're winding down and they might yeah. not want to actually type anything yeah but at seven when they're still sort of in in that connection mode they're more likely to engage which i find really fascinating but you won't see me going live at seven or eight o'clock no you won't see me going live at seven or eight o'clock i'm no, done yeah. and dusted by then babes i'm yeah. not oh, sorry guys but no. um, you're looking for me at the 10 or 11 in the morning <laughs> yeah. and that's and i like lunch times and actually i realized something that works really well is nine o'clock in the morning because people's days haven't truly gotten underway yeah so nine o'clock not such a bad time to think about particularly if you're doing a challenge and you want them to take action that day um i love i like that idea as well so planning is could be as um, complex as a, a full-blown content plan which i i do with clients regularly or it could just yep. be planning on a post-it note with three dot points that you're going to cover in that facebook live um all of all of the above counts oh, for some counts, <laughs> so let's talk about our preparation then. So we know what we're going to talk about by now, but now we're going to get ready to go live to help you stay on track, get some eyeballs, you know, improve your, your confidence in it as well. Um, and part of that is the equipment and technology. So I just want to share really quickly um, what I've learnt over probably 300 plus uh, live broadcasts is that Wi-Fi in Melbourne does not work. So I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what, here either. I don't know what your Wi-Fi is like where you are. But I actually just purchased a, um, a modem, which is mobile data, and it has 140 gigabytes a month for $70. And I think that is awesome value. Yep. Um, so I've changed my phone plan completely. And I just use mobile data all the time to go live because it's way more 
stable. And so that was a lesson I learned when it was constantly going, you know, your out. internet's unstable, you're dropping out and it had paused the video. Yep. And, it, and it's frustrating because it puts you off track. It puts your, your viewers um, in a position of having to decide whether to say or go. So equipment and tech for me is I'm always on my phone when I go live unless I'm using a, a different technology to share my screen like like we are now. Yep. But usually I'll just use my tripod that sits on my desk next to my computer, my phone uh, <laughs> in landscape and mobile data. And so once you get into the swing of using it the same way every time, sit or stand in the same place if you can. I know that some people's businesses might require moving around. And if that's true, maybe invest in a better tripod that actually smoothly moves with you rather than you holding the phone. Um, because this all qualify, um, what's it, what am I trying to say? This gives better quality basically to your Facebook Live. Um, I believe that if you are going to use live regularly, having a standard introduction is really helpful. Just saying, hey, I'm Jenny DeLacy, the visibility coach, and today is time for the blah, 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 and tell them what I'm going to talk about. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds really simple, but you'd be surprised how many people don't know how to start or end a Facebook Live. So they, they go live and they're sort of moving around and, and, and it's sort of like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're live. Like you're actually already live and you haven't engaged or said hello or anything yet. Yeah, so, no, and I start all of mine and... <clears throat> you know, with Linda Reed Annifer and I keep it, even the ones in presenter groups, even ones where people know me, yeah, I will I start with my name. Yeah. Um, I commented to myself this morning in inside our presenters group going, you know who I am, why I keep doing it? It's because it's my standard. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's a really good habit and it models really well for everybody else as well. Um, and one thing we need to get used to doing is just turn on do not disturb on your phone. Oh, um, gosh, yes. When, just so people know, if you are live on your phone and you get a... Um, a message flash up on the on the screen while you're live. Mm -hmm. Your viewers can't see it, okay? So don't no, panic. If they can't see it yet. <laughs> if it's they don't get the notifications either. <laughs> sweary, some sweary thing from one of my friends or something. Um, so they don't see notifications, but it does just put a a, um, a blip in in the broadcast. And and then of course you've got to sort of you might want to flick it off the screen, and then you're leaning in, yep. and it's just one of those things. If you turn on Do Not Disturb, you, you it doesn't get rid of all your notifications, but it will get rid of um, um, some of the bigger ones. And it will distract you guys. Like, you, you know, if you're getting a notification pop up, it distracts you and yeah. you don't want anything throwing you off through the process. Mm. But I also yeah, I don't want you yeah. not starting because yeah. you don't have the tripod yet or you don't have the the ability to be there. Because when I say I break Jenny's rules, I hold my phone all the time. I don't know how you can. It gives me sore muscles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go live for that long. <laughs> Um, so my recommendation, if you don't have a little tripod, they're on, like this was $60, um, my little sitting on my desk one, um, and I've had it for more than two years. But maybe you could go live on your desktop where, again, it's stable. You don't, you're not, you don't have to hold it. And the only reason I don't want to hold it is that it, I move around too much. And so if you have a lovely um, I talk with my hands too. <laughs> yeah, if you have a lovely Samsung case like mine, it will actually... Oh, I don't know if I can show you now. It's got a little frame on the back of it. Ah, yeah. Yep, and it yep. clips all into place. But that's still, I don't use that because my headset goes down the bottom of my phone. So oh, that's annoying. So I the, not a not a good functional. But um, then again, I also go live in portrait. <laughs> <laughs> you do too. But um, I do. But the reason I do that is to show people the difference between a Facebook Live and a pre-record for me. Yes, 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 yes. So it's about true. showing that difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I always recommend we really do do our very best with light. Now, today I've shut my blinds because it's very sunny in Melbourne. Yep. Um, I did have a light on before, but it was a bit yellow. I'll turn a different one on, just show you. See how we go. This is just a, a really simple desk lamp. Oh, whoops, sorry. Um, that I have over the back sometimes just adds just a little bit of extra light. But I think it's really important that we can see you. Yes. Um, sadly, you know, I think it's such a shame if I see somebody going live and they're kind of in the dark. We're, we're sort of, we don't, we're not as trusting of people we can't see properly, some primitive thing probably. Um, so yes. people are, you look more trustworthy if I can see you, but actually vainly we look a lot better if we can, if we've got light on our face as well. Um, so I like to um, make sure that I've got natural light um, wherever possible because it's free and it's not a bad um, colour. Uh, but also you could use a desk lamp like I do from yep. time to time. Um, 
and you go and go and buy big lights if you want to but just yeah. try for natural light if you can because it's free obviously um and sound look I use my headphones I never used to it used to annoy me a little bit to see people with headphones in but actually I think I'm kind of desensitized to it now so if, if you feel you need better in a lot of ways and if you need like the condenser in your phone the mic in the phones is really good yeah so we don't, you know, like you probably don't need a microphone actually. But just be careful if you're going to be outside because the sound is always muffled by br- even the lightest yep. breeze will ruin the sound. So be prepared. Are we going to be indoors or outdoors, standing, sitting, you know? So people, you give yourself the best chance for people to, to watch and stay watching. Um, and I said before about writing notes on a little post-it note, I usually just write three points that I'm going to cover um, in case I get distracted by messages or comments from people and I want to get back on track. Yeah, exactly. And have a description and a title. Now, I write mine in Evernote and then I cut and paste it into the description after the live has been posted yes. to the page. So titles are really important, aren't they? So don't just say, um, uh, well, welcome to, you know, whatever event you're at or whatever. Say um, key takeaways from a keynote speaker, Jenny DeLacy, at, and say the event or something yeah. so people can go, oh, I was at that event, you know. Um, oh, or, I'm oh, at that event and I'm going to chase it around now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So think about the title being compelling enough to get people to, to click um, and they might watch with sound for a minute if they see you in the news feed but if they get the notification that you're live, it's Jenny DeLacy's live now and it'll say where, it doesn't say the yes. title until you click on it. But then if the title says this one's for you, if blah, or, you know, come up with a title that, that is compelling enough for people to um, t- to want to click. And the description, the reason that somebody said to me, I don't understand why you put such a lot of information in your description, wouldn't, wouldn't you rather they watch the video? I said, but they're watching the video while they're reading it anyway. <laughs> so they might see me moving, even if it's without sound, they're seeing me speak and they're reading the description at the same time. And that helps people who like to read instead of listen for a start but it also gives people value in the post in your description even if they haven't clicked for sound it's still all part of the same beast it's going to get you know pushed further because they've hung around for a while and watched and read what you've got to say and it means you can put um, links in there to what you've talked about in your Facebook live absolutely um would you add anything else to preparation don't overthink it yeah, yeah. Because um, this preparation, it goes, the steps are great and they're all there for you checklist and Jenny's got the PDF and we'll mm. have all of that for you in the replay for you to be able to watch and do. Yeah. But the, the other thing is, is don't overthink it. You know, the reality of it is going live is never going to be perfect. Mm. It's a live video. You don't get, you know, it is, it's never going to be perfect. So if you've got all but four, Mm. Or you've got all but what you know. If you've got all but one, or all but two, or all but three, just do it. Yeah. Do it anyway. And and the good thing about it is that I have never seen anyone get worse. <laughs> true. That's so true. You can quote me on that. Put it on a meme, someone. <laughs> well, there you go, Jen. That's that is your quote from today's webinar. That is your image. See, there. I know. I'm going to set your homework. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anyone get worse because. We, we get over the fear, we start to feel more confident in speaking to camera, in what we're saying. So even though they might not be perfect, they get more perfect, I think, um, the more we do them. Mm-hmm. So I really want to encourage everybody with that. So when we're actually producing, that means we've pressed go live, right? We've pressed the button. And while it's, it used to do a countdown, sadly it doesn't do that anymore, but it'll have the little X sort of blinking at you until it connects just always just look at the camera and smile yes. so that you're ready. So that, <laughs> it, it, you know, it, don't forget the vast majority of people watch back later after you're live. Mm-hmm. So if I click in and watch you later on and you're looking at your computer, like, you know, looking down at your screen, your thing or whatever, and you're not even engaged with me for a few seconds at the beginning. I'm not going to get know, me. Is that going to make me stick around? I know it sounds a bit pedantic, but I do think it makes a difference to how engaged people are going to be. And, look, I suggest waving. Wave at people. Yeah, I have done. I said, come in. I've done that a couple of times. Yeah, I've done the come in, come in ones. Uh, I like those ones. Or, hi, you know, hi, everybody. So that you have that sort of um, joys are always really compelling because she's usually waving or doing a dance or something anyway. But but, um, 
And as Joy said, we habit. can delete the bad ones without Good. posting if we want to. And of I have course, of course, I have too. I'll tell you which one I deleted one time. I was actually very ranty. I was actually, <laughs> I was a bit. I've I done was, a few of those. I was ranty. grumpy. Yeah, I was a bit grumpy, and I thought later after because you know how you can play it back before you yep. press um, post and I thought oh you're coming across as a real grumpy old thing and I didn't post it and yep. people who'd watched it live said oh where did it go and I said I actually changed my mind and I, I didn't put it up on the page so not to be ranty forever yeah it was a bit yeah it wasn't, for it wasn't on minutes. brand it wasn't on it brand. wasn't on brand <laughs> you know the reality of it is you know you are going to do videos occasionally that you'll look back and go oh my god did I put that out hmm. but and people even still, and even then you can still get, forgiving. Yeah, but you can also delete them then if you really yeah, exactly. want to. Oh, absolutely. Um, so the only ones you've got to and oh, actually, and even if somebody had saved it, if you delete the post, they it won't they go anywhere. It, yeah. So what I say is, you know, have your intro and a call to action. So let people know what you want them to do, and you can have those things prepared in advance. So as, as an example, mine would be, um, and don't forget, um, my next Melbourne workshop is on the blah blah, yep. blah of June. I'll put the link in if you want to have a look at the at the um, ticket page. And work. don't forget to put the links in. <laughs> yeah, and then go back and put them in the description. And yes, put exactly. them in a, comment, in a comment too if you like. I actually prefer putting them in a comment because I think it gets everyone who's at least commented and watched the video, it gets them notifying. I'll do it in both. Yep, I did it in I both did. the other day. Yeah. Um, oh, there you go. Double, um, double action. Yeah. So because if you, when you put it in a comment, you get the preview of whatever the link is and in yep. We're in the description, you don't. You, you don't. just get your link. So, exactly. have you know? Be let people know where to find you, even if it's just something along the lines of, um, "I'd love for you to share this with your uh, business community and let them know the the things that we talked about today, or whatever you call." But have it ready. Somebody actually said to me, "I find the ending of the Facebook Live harder than the beginning," and I agree with them. The template that's in that course has that sort of. How do we recap and then finish up? Yep. And, you know, when we were saying before, people suddenly join at the last minute. Oh, like, yes. Oh, God, does that mean I've got to start again? Ugh. Um, and the no, answer I... is no. Uh, <laughs> but it is tempting, you know, how do we manage our audience? But we'll talk about that in a sec. But my so, tip for that one, Jen, is, is yep. it just recap what you've said. Now, yep. in live we've covered blah, 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 if you feel like you must. Yes. And blah, blah, blah is my favourite term of the week. Blah, blah, blah. And it's really important. If you've got points written on a post-it note, you know what you were going to talk about, then it's easy to recap. It's easy to say to people, now, so far we've covered deep breathing. Let's pretend I'm talking about nerve busting again. We've covered deep breathing. We've covered focusing on your audience and out of your own head. And now we're talking about blah. So that's how I I would do a pre-recorded video too, by the way. Recap. You know, let people know, signposts about where you're at. Because um, not everyone watches from the start. That's ever. right. And audience management. So when we're producing our Facebook Live, we have some decisions to make. We can welcome everybody that turns up live, you know, mid-sentence and say hi, or we could finish our sentence, pause, say hello to the people who've walked in. That's what I I feel like. It's like you walked into my training room. Yep. So would I stop mid-sentence for the other people? Probably not. Yep. I'd just say hi afterwards. So don't let it be so complicating that you you can absolutely ignore everybody if you really wanted to until the end or something. And in sometimes depending on the topic you need to. Like Friday night cheers is a bit different. Everyone's coming in for a drink. So I'll say hi to everyone as they're joining us. But if I'm on a particular topic... Um, I will. Sorry, Mark. I'll grab your question in a second. I went to the sidelines. See, go back. Right, yeah. Tony, scratching syndrome. If I'm on a particular topic, I will just go through the topic and then come back and say, you know, thank you for the comments and ask, answer the questions at the end. But when your audience management, guys, that's where you can actually do that in your live. You know, in this live, I'm going to take all the questions at the end, or I'm going to, mm-hmm. you know, pop any things. Mark has said, is there an optimal optimum length for a Facebook live to gain maximum traction from your I audience? Love this question. <clears throat> Excuse me, I absolutely love it. So. The, the stats for video generally say that we get maximum, you know, 50-something percent of people watch for longer um, if it's about a two-minute video. Yeah, but that's not true for Facebook Live. We need to give Facebook time to send the notification out to let people know that we're live. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we need, I say, about 10 minutes. So if you are only going live for a couple of minutes, people won't actually get the notification. There's a lag, remember. So. Yep. The lag's probably, what do you reckon, 30 seconds or something? 30 seconds or so, yeah. By the time I get a notification that Linda's live 
and flick and and that takes ages because whatever I wasn't looking at my phone at the time or yep. whatever. So it's already three minutes since I got the notification, and she only went live for two minutes. I'm I'm going to miss it, and I probably would watch it back if it was two minutes. <clears throat> I'd wonder what you could cover in that time, but oh, lots <laughs> ten minutes. Ten minutes gives Facebook time to get out there and let everybody let people know. And the longer you go live, the more that stuff gets pushed out. If people join. The algorithm says, well, this is interesting because people are watching this now. They've clicked on the notification, therefore I'll send it to more people. Um, But I also think about later on, what's a doable kind of time frame? If my description is really clear and compelling title, then about 10 minutes seems to be a really good length of time. You can go live for four hours if you really want to. (laughs) You can can go live from an event for I think it's up to four hours now. It used to be two hours, but it's Mm -hmm. longer now. Um, and people do that at big events and things if they're yeah, live, do a live streaming. Yeah. Guys, look, um, you know, I will mix it up. Some of mine are really short. Some of mine are, a, here's a quick tip. This is what's been mm. popping up in my newsfeed on a regular basis. Short, sharp tip that gets out there. Maximum I would ever do Facebook Live. They, they, well, the skills webinars are the longest I do and they go for an hour. Yeah, yeah. So they're the longest live stream that we do. Mm. Um, but, you know, most of my stuff is, is done within 30 minutes. Mm. Um, and most probably done within 10 yeah. because I look at an audience who's incredibly time poor. Mm. So I don't want to talk to my audience for because they're not going to take it in. Mm. So if we were doing a challenge, Mark, <clears throat> and I said every day at 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning I'll be live with that day's sort of tutorial yep. steps, then that would be longer. That's probably 30 minutes or yep. whatever. But going live on my page, I tend to keep it around 10 minutes so that it's easy for people to consume and it also doesn't take me, you know, all day to plan it and and, oh, and, gosh, yes. and do it. But you know what? I've been live for well over an hour because people kept asking questions. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> in a Q&A or an Ask Me Anything, go yeah. for a long time. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. And I, I think that's um, um, a really good rule of thumb. So, and don't be afraid of the tech. So while we are in production, so we're, we're actually live if you get a message, nobody can see it. If you get a phone call, it pauses the broadcast. So you can, can, you can ditch the phone call and that's why Do Not Disturb is kind of handy because you, I don't think you get phone calls. Do you? When you no, I don't think so. No. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and don't be afraid that sometimes if it says your internet is unstable and it, and it gets glitchy, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah, sometimes I say, you know what, I'm going to disconnect and start again in a few minutes and people Absolutely. come back. Absolutely. I've done and, it. Yeah, so I just feel, you know, there's a lot of uh, – if I've asked the question what's stopping you many times mm-hmm. in the last two years and the one of the biggest um, things that stops people is I'm just really afraid of the technology. Absolutely. And I, <clears throat> I can't tell you the times I've seen people go sideways that have been doing this for a really long time and something has happened on their Facebook app or something and suddenly they're side on. And they, it's not that they didn't know how to do it. It's just that the tech yeah. has had a wobbly. And so they just disconnect and they start again. So don't don't be afraid of the tech. I, that's not dis- disconnecting is absolutely fine. And, yeah. you know, then just come back and say take two or whatever. I've done Friday yeah. night cheers where I can, you know, 90% of the time and I'm half tempted to turn around, Jenny, and show the mess in my office and show yeah. the lights and the setup that I've got here. But the reality of it is I've got two massive lights that allow me to have white light on me on an ongoing basis, but I've got there and there's shadow on my face because where I place my phone where it always works doesn't work or it always has signal doesn't work. Yeah. Or where still I've gone live and had no audio and not found out to the end of the Facebook Live that there was absolutely no audio and had to go Oh, back. no. <laughs> the, oh, God. Yeah, I did that one in the Skills yeah. Summit last week. I did a live <laughs> update of what was going on for our presenters oh, and there was no yeah. audio and you came and told me afterwards. I'm like, man. Yeah, I was like, what? Um, Joy, that is so funny. Joy just said that um, the orientation on her iPad was locked, so she was side on as well. So, you know, yeah. in, in the there's a free resource in the pdf there's a link to a blog and one of the things that happens just really as an aside the way that you test whether you can be in landscape or not apart from setting the auto rotate on your on your phone or your ipad is that when you click in to the place to go live wherever that is on your yep. page or your, or your group mine tells me should, to rotate <laughs> and it should rotate with you so yep. usually if i press go live the screen will then rotate. And there's a photo of me looking sort of out of behind the notification box to sort of show this is what it looks like when you um, when you know that you can be in landscape. So I'm not sure why that didn't happen on your iPad. 
uh, joy. But, yeah, again, if you see it, that's why I often have my phone, but I also have my desktop next to me. So I kind of see, I can see what the broad, see what it looks like. And and I can see straight away if it's not working, I'll just um, disconnect. Guys, I popped in a link again to Jenny's incredible offer because this course, Jen, this course you're putting out today is normally two ninety seven, isn't? Um, yeah, it's because it's got a really juicy checklist, like lots of instructions, <sighs> templates for how to um, uh, come up with your Facebook Live sort of um, script, if you like. Come lots to it at the end again, yeah. guys. But it's seriously, if you do nothing else but take the course purely to get the information and have a one on one with Jenny mm. about Facebook Live. Yeah, because I love I love doing strategy. You just my, spurt that many ideas at you. You think I spurt ideas at you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's move on to then publishing. So this is when we click finish. Yes, my uh, favorite bit. <laughs> it, pops, it pops up on our on our screen then that we choose to post it, and I think it says share now. It used to say yes, share. Um, yeah, it used to say post or something. But anyway, it's, there's a blue button that says share, and then there's a whited out button that says delete. Um, and when that happens, of course, you've got a few minutes, right? Yes. So don't feel that it's instant because it's not. It'll take a little, a few minutes. I usually give it probably three to five minutes to load to the page. Yep. <clears throat> and then I go straight in <laughs> and I click on that post and I update the thumbnail straight away because it's always hideous. Always ugly. <laughs> And I edit the description. So I add any links in. I make sure that the description's got all the juicy details that I've already written. It's probably, I don't know, 200 and, oh, it wouldn't be many words. It's usually the three points I'm going to cover and a bit more detail. Um, thanks for watching and a link or, or whatever. And in your prep, guys, you've got those notes already. So I quite often would say, you know, when we're doing this, yep. make it part of your prep. Make those notes part of the writing. That You know, this yeah. is what we covered and pop your three dot points in. In this live, yeah. we're covering X, Y, Z. It's just brain. so much easier to cut and paste it straight yep. into the thing. If you don't know how to edit the video, you basically just click into the post itself so the video takes up the screen. screen yep. And in the top right, there's three buttons and you click on there and it says edit video. So when you, you're in the editing page, groups and pages look slightly different in that, but essentially you get to choose a new th thumbnail and you can update. And here is also where you can add captions. Now, yes. captions are an interesting beast. I don't do captions for Facebook Lives. Neither do I. Um, I think last time I did a 10-minute Facebook Live, it took me 45 minutes after that to do the captions. And I thought, yep. you know what, I'm going to put as much detail in the description as I possibly can um, because I don't want to do captions. Uh, if I was doing a Facebook boosted sort of post or something, I, I, I would. Yep. But, but for, for you can auto-generate the captions through that screen there. And what happens is... <clears throat> gets my name wrong every time. It always says, yeah, it, there's a word that I must say... Even if I say Facebook Live, I think it says I say love or life or something. Oh, there you go. Um, but all the way through, sadly, Australian accent is too hard for Facebook to understand and the captions always need really detailed really? editing. And that's why I don't, I don't do auto captions. Um, and my, my preference on Facebook Live is, is somewhere along the line, this content has to be different to your polished videos that you put out with mm. your captions and all of that sort of stuff out there. So mm. somewhere along the lines there's got to be a point of difference. And somewhere along the line as a business owner, we have to get the shit back to business. We have to get back to where we, what we do. So the reality of it is if people are wanting to consume my live content, I'm expecting to put the sound on. That's most probably my, yeah, yeah. my take funny. on that one. The other day I had a look at my Google Analytics and 75% of people are yep. consuming my content on a desktop. Yep. And I was like, woohoo, thank God for that, because <laughs> it means there's so yeah. much more functionality. Functionality, exactly. Um, Jenny, uh, I can't generate my captions on a Mac, says Joy. Any solution for that? Um, go into, make sure you're in the Chrome browser, Joy, um, just in case, because there's no doubt that Chrome has more functionality than, than Safari. I'm not sure Yes. If, yeah, if that answers that question so when you go in to the editing page so edit you yep. open the post edit the video um you should be able to add captions i, I know where joy is hitting because i hit it the same thing the other day and it popped up to me i was frustrated because i couldn't add captions because i was live screening a video oh. um okay joy when you're there if it's in chrome make sure you've selected the drop down for the for the um language because mine 
the other day, if you hadn't accepted the drop down to English or US or whatever it was, there's a drop down now for languages. Which I'll take then a allows the caption. We'll do a screenshot later. Yeah, because it was um, a pain. Um, it took yeah. me forever because I'm. I've got my caption file here. Why can't I upload it? The button yeah. wasn't showing. Yeah. Nothing was showing, and I. So I just. Re- it was in the middle of recording the Facebook course that that happened to me, and I. Was, <laughs> I five takes of that screencast oh. just to get the how to upload your caption part. But I it. <laughs> so um Joy, in the PDF of what we're doing today, that'll be in the replay yep. email, there's a link to a blog post called um Add Captions Four Ways. And yes. auto generate is in there. So I'm pretty sure I've already got the answer to where to actually get the Do auto that. caption. Um, capability, but you know, I thought hopefully yeah. Chrome was. Yeah. Jen, the copywriter in you is going to love this. You know what the three dots are? The three dots at the top of, you know, as, as a the copywriter. Ellipsis. Yeah, the ellipsis. It's for yeah. more information. Yeah, dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. And That's actually, it. when I write handwrite notes, I often do dot, dot, dot for myself. I to love go, my ellipsis. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Um, so, one thing I actually forgot to go back to in produce was how do we encourage engagement? So as we know, most of us who've been either listening to Linda or across, you know, all the updates to the Facebook algorithm in the last um, half of the year will know that Facebook have said it was it's not so much engagement with my post that gets mm-hmm. it further, it's engagement within that post. So yes. what are some of our tips for encouraging people that are watching, that are commenting to interact with each other in a meaningful way. Linda, have you got any ideas or thoughts about that? Look, it's about it's about opening the conversation. Um, so when it comes down to engagement, guys, it really is as simple as asking a question. Mm. So it's what tip would you share? You know, I say to people on a Friday night, here's come in and say hello to me, let me know what you've been up to on the weekend. That co- encourages conversation for the week. That encourages conversation mm. between each other on the post. Yeah. It's about sa- allowing people to tell their story because this is what will make engagement work for you on Facebook, whether it's Facebook Live, Twitter, whatever it is. It's about allowing people to tell their story and interact with other people's stories. Because mm. that's what social media is all about. It's all about stories in the long run. Mm. Promoting your business is, is, the, is part of it. Mm. But it's stage four or five of the storytelling yeah. process. Yeah, true. And in here, the publish part of this. Or is yes. It promote? Did I do it in here? Sorry. Actually, there's a thing missing from here. Ah, and that is go. that go back into your comments and reply. Yes. So once you've edited the description. Absolutely. You've added some details. You've given it a bit of love, put a bit of link, a link into wherever you want them to go. Go back in and engage. Don't just say thanks, great to see you, hello there. If I've said, uh, so yesterday, for example, I heard this great tip from Helen Bolger-Harris was being interviewed and I happened to see it um, and I clicked in and and her one of her tips for creatives for writing to-do lists was to actually mind map your to-do list rather than writing a list. Now I'm yep. a list writer, like I'm a crazy list I love my list. But I really, lo- I really loved that idea. Like yeah, I'm- absolutely. And, I, and so I said, what a fantastic tip to mind map your to-do list. So I actually accept yep. what I was saying was a great yep. tip. Um, thinking, okay, well, I've given you an, an I, you know. <laughs> an okay, so come back and reply. Yeah. Um, and the person who was running the Facebook Live went back in and said, thanks, Jenny. And I thought, oh, that's a pity because I think we could have had probably, a conversation. Yeah, I think so. It wasn't Helen. It wasn't her Facebook Live. It was somebody yep. else. But it's just a way to go back in, answer people's um, comments. And, look, sometimes if somebody says something, I tag someone else. It's hard on your business page. Yep. Did group it works for me, I think tagging someone else and saying, hey, you'll love this. So they exactly they it. like just think about how can I give this more legs um, because, the you know, we're being rewarded. The more interaction we get in, in posts generally, meaningful, con- con- meaningful interaction with each other, so not just with me but with the people in the actual um, post. And when we're talking about yeah. that, come back to your live a day or so, like, a, you know, a day later mm. and check those comments and check those responses so that you're not – it's like every piece of marketing. It's not set and forget. Mm. You've done it. 
people are going to engage with it at different times of the day. So come back and engage back with them. Otherwise, they're not going to engage with you. Yeah. And I'll, and that actually, maximising Facebook live video engagement, actually, that's what we were just talking about. So I've done it in the wrong order. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, but, uh, so one of the other ways is, like Linda said, ask questions, invite some, you know, are you struggling? Tell me what your number one challenge is with this particular thing that I'm talking about today. Like make it. And even go back to our with Carol mm. where we talked about ads. Call your audience out. Mm. Mm. So like as Jenny, as Jenny was saying, are you struggling with this? Have you been thinking about X, Y, Z? Because yeah. if you call them out, you've got their attention. Yeah. And just, you know, I pretty much straight after I'm live and actually sometimes while it's live, mm-hmm. I will share it. So I Absolutely. share it to I share it to my group. I usually share it to business, 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 and I would share it to maybe other big groups if they yep. Let me. Um, Especially if it's on the theme days. Like, so today's um, tactics and tips in a lot of groups. So yeah, yeah. if you're doing how-tos like this, share it. You yeah, do live absolutely. and then include it as part of your tactics and tips, which is, yeah. you know, part of why the Facebook groups calendar exists. Mm. Look at your theme days and plan your content out. Yeah, I love that. Um, Linda, do you think you share the post directly from the share button or do you get the link to the post and share that? Or do does it both. matter? Do a bit of both. Yeah, okay. look, it depends on what where I am. If it's a comment, I'll share the link. But I, I actually hit the share button because the share button showing Facebook mm. the end for engagement. Yeah, that's exactly so right. Showing how many times the video has been shared. Mm. Obviously, do not dump it. I cannot mm. stress that enough. As a Facebook explain group, why why is on live and then dumped it in my Facebook group. Yeah. I want to like hurt people. Um, <laughs> But, you know, explain why. I just went live on this topic. I thought it would relate to BBB members because Mm. and if every post you do in social media is I thought it would relate to you because Mm. if that's the one piece of advice I can give you apart from asking people questions is that's going to be the big thing out there. But, you know, share... Share from share from the button is most probably the main thing. And Jenny, I don't know if you saw it in Hanny's um, one last week, but you can actually embed your Facebook Live now into your website. Oh, fabulous! What as um, an RSS feed? No, no, no. Embed there's a, a code to be, embed the video. I tried it last oh. week, but I've got to do a little couple of changes. So the, you can now go when you're going to edit your video Facebook Live video. You can actually embed it, and it embeds the comments. Oh, that's lovely. So, and so yeah, you want to pick the one that, yeah, pick, you know, go and look at the lives that did really well because you want yeah. you want people that land on your website to see the engagement you're getting. Yeah, it's pretty that's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. It's in the, um, Joy, if you want it, it's in the replay from we did with Hanny from Repurpose.io. Because um, I only it's... did, um, I took it, did Repurpose.io from my business page to YouTube and yep. the other, I think only offered me. I don't think I, oh, maybe I did get off at the, I was on my phone. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't do the, uh, so the embed is a, is a Facebook feature. So when you go to your Facebook. Oh, I'll go and have a look. Cool. Yeah, there's the embed option there as well, awesome. which is pretty awesome. That um, is awesome. So check and use it sparingly, like pick yep. the one that's got the top the ones, loads yeah. of yeah engagement. And I always pin that week's Facebook Live to the top of my business page yep. because um, it definitely gets more views because it's at the very top. So people land on the Facebook page, they'll see my live video from that week with comments and shares and, and so forth. Um, and that gives definitely, definitely gives you better analytics. Yep. Um, so I've got a, a Facebook page video, welcome to the page, but sometimes that's a bit, you know, I want fresher content at the top of my page yep. um, compared to my group. So you can download it and you can share it to YouTube. You can use repurpose.io to yep. do that for you. You don't have to because downloading Facebook Lives is not always straightforward. Sometimes it's really easy and other yep. times it takes me through this whole, it depends where you're downloading it from, I think. It Guys, I'll put the pay. link in the replay for, re, for the repurpose yeah, one. Yeah, I think it's worth having a look at. Trial offer to yeah. have a look at yeah. as well. Um, and I would say to promote, and, and I confess I'm a little bit lazy at this, um, but do as I say, not as I do. Um, add a post you know what I'll be chasing you on later on this week. <laughs> add a post for next time. That gives you some accountability, but also it lets people know this yep. person is live every Monday at whatever time and it might have the next topic. Um, and what I started doing that I loved and I got really sick and uh, I got the flu last year and it threw me. I still sometimes feel like I'm behind. Um, but I was using here are the, here's next week's topic. So yep. I had created a, a full month worth of um, more than a month, but a calendar month worth of stuff. So all the posts from, from each blog and every video and all that sort of mm-hmm. stuff. And I'd go live on a Monday <clears throat> and 
announced the following week and, and I was getting really, really good engagement and, and from that. Yep. good return visitors. So I would say promote. Uh, look, if, if we're not being strategic, you can't promote, can you, because you don't know what you're going to talk yeah. about or when you're going to go live. So I just think if we want to get more eyeballs on our business pages or grow our groups and um, use Facebook Live as a tool to, to make us truly the go-to expert at what we do um, and have that leveraged, unstoppable sort of feeling about it, then you really do have to have a strategy and that's where your promotion is going And the be. promotion comes beforehand, guys. It yeah, yeah. At the beginning. So on my Facebook page, there's an event for each Friday that we're going Friday, live Friday night tears. Then on a Friday, I post to Instagram. Mm. I post to, fa- to, for, to Facebook and I post it to the BBB group about what my topic is. So what am I going to go live about? Now, I'm yeah. not a strategic because Friday Night Cheers is a conversation about what's happened in business that yeah. week. Well, that, that's I'm exactly not a strategic, strategic though. Topic. Yeah. Oh, well, well, it sort of is strategic. Yeah, it is. It's saying <laughs> it's, I, I, it's you're my bringing random together thought. the stuff that's happening from the yeah, week. Exactly. You're packing it up for me. That's, what I, that's the way I look at it. Exactly. And that's, um, so that's my conversation. I've got a client, Tasha Jennings, who does incredibly well on a Monday talking about fertility and IVF and I'm, she's got her topic out. Now she goes live and then her co- content goes out. You know, what's, what's the next one going to be? Now she uses an app called Be Live TV mm. and it works really, really well for her to being able to do those Facebook lives. So it's about tapping in mm. to what you, what's going to work for you. And you'll notice, out there. guys will notice that I, I don't talk about um, apps yep. or tech um, because I have always tried to just keep it straight into the Facebook yep. app right itself. Yep. And then, um, then I ask Linda how to do <laughs> How to do the tech. What's the app? Look, which, I love which, being live for pre-scheduling, <laughs> but my Facebook live strategy apart from the, the Friday night cheers is the thought of what's happening at the moment, what's what's the conversation, what have we seen pop up mm. because my industry moves like that. PR and marketing mm. doesn't move to the point that I could tell you what's going to be, I can tell you what evergreen is going to be newsworthy this week, but mm. um, a politician opens their mouth, TV interviews go to air, the news cycle changes. So quite often my Facebook lives around those topics are, oh, my God, I just saw this, you need to act. Yeah. And so because we rely, you know, you're you're essentially modelling that trends are really important in, yep. in PR and that's why it exactly. works, I think. So, guys, I've tried a few third, third-party apps and I just want to touch on yeah. why would we use a third-party app to go live on Facebook? Why wouldn't we go direct to Facebook? And yep. one of the things that, and I, as I said to you before, I stopped using for, um be live TV because the internet was so unstable and it just looked terrible and it was glitchy and horrid and yep. pixelated and whatever. And it does that to me whenever I use it on Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, however, the benefits are that you can brand it, you can um, say who you're, you're interviewing so our names can be down the bottom. You see the comments um, come up on the right-hand side and you can actually highlight different comments. So the production value of using a third-party app is way higher. There's no doubt about yep. that. Um so and I know that's what attracts people to using third-party apps because you get more bang for your buck. And this is on yep. Zoom, but it's yep. also live on Facebook and Facebook. You get repurposed because of, you know, because of that. So because there's lots of benefits, but I, but I often refrain from talking about third-party apps and stuff because a lot of people I talk to aren't even using Facebook Live. Right, yeah. and start. <laughs> so the other thing, Jen, I have to tell everyone what, we, what I found last week in putting the Facebook course together because I know I was so excited when I told you this. If you are an iPhone user and you go to your Facebook business page at the moment, you've got to go to page on desktop. Go to page on desktop. And you can create a Facebook Live brand kit, which means mm. you can put your logo on your Facebook Live and your outro and intro. Now, I don't have an Android. I have an Android device. This is one of the things I've been, mm, come on, Facebook. Um, <laughs> but if you are an iPhone user, yeah. go and set it up. So if you've got an iOS device, you know, I, I'm, iPad, you can put your logo on the bottom. So I've got the logo on the bottom, watermark. Uh, I've got it ready to go. The intro and outro is there. I use my landscape outro. It is set for portrait settings. I don't know what if it's going to go for oh, landscape okay. down the track, but it was set for portrait when I got in there and, and tested it out. Oh, okay. Believe I it's pages find only. It on mine. So uh, under, it's just that it under the video, under the videos yet. tab on hmm. Facebook. So it's under hmm. videos. I'm going to have another look on the pa- um, Facebook page. Sometimes I say to people, if you can't see it, just change change browsers. Make sure you yep. go back to exactly. Chrome away from Safari or whatever. I, I'm a Chrome girl all the way. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the system in a nutshell. Yep. Um, the PDF has more detail and more links for you to get some free resources to sort of um, beef up, you know, how do I actually come up with my introduction? What, you know, 
how do I even write this thing or do this thing or add captions or whatever. So all that resource is linked in that PDF that everybody will be getting. Um, But that system is thinking about how do I plan, what's my preparation, how do I produce it, what do I publish, what do I, where am I promoting it. So you kind of end up with a step-by-step that you do every time. It takes less and less time and it's less and less um, daunting in a way because you just know that you're going to do it the same way each time. And starts um, to become second nature. Yeah, that's right. And if anyone wants any encouragement, go back and watch the first couple of skills webinars I ran. Mm. There. So, um, any questions? Any other questions? Pop your questions into the Q&A chat, guys. I have popped the offer in from Jenny again. I will come back and put it on the Facebook live stream very, very shortly for everyone there. Jenny has offered you the opportunity to take her Facebook live masterclass, which is normally $297, full of amazing, amazing tips. If you got something from today, you want to take her up on this offer for just $97. That also gives you a bonus call with Jenny to get a whole heap of Facebook live ideas about. So do it. Take it up on the offer. I cannot stress this enough. Jenny, do we have an end date on this one? Um, I actually put it up there because you, I know the community watch your yep. webinars for a while. So I put, a, I put an end date a fair way out actually because I just thought oh, I'll let you guide me about how long these things um Beautiful. Guys, I'm going to say you've got 30 days. You have to yeah. take this up by the end of June. Yeah. So okay. I, I, I put 30 days in the in the yep. um, box yesterday when I was. Ah, there you go. I'll see you. Uh, just to I see. We were thinking we were on the same track, so that's yeah. good. So we're going to go end of June. You have to take Jenny up on this offer by the end of June. I cannot yeah. stress it strongly enough. Take her up on it. If you see Jenny at an event, hey, Jen, we've got some stuff coming out. We might as well promo what we're working on. <laughs> I know. Um, two things I wanted to mention, everybody. Yeah. That the 30th of June, um, Linda has given me a challenge to run something fantastic out. on the 30th of June for World Social Media Day. Um, and perhaps we'll add the link to the event in the uh, replay email. Yeah, well. Hey, Jen, can you up. take your screen down and then both of us can be on, on uh, yeah, screen? Yep. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm going to make us Facebook live now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, guys, on 30th of June, I have set, you literally set Jenny this project. So visit, the Visibility Project is going to launch. We are, Jenny is going to be running. Uh, have you got the event up and running yet? Can you no, I will, I will before you yeah. um, <laughs> send before out that email. Though. Before I go. <laughs> Before I go live this afternoon, before I put this out this afternoon. So I cannot stress enough, guys. It is, if you're in Melbourne, you need to be coming along to this. Book the 30th of June. I am going to be getting on a train very, very early in the morning to come down and see you. So I'm expecting you all to be there. <laughs> so we're going to run some skills seminars around um, Facebook Live in person and yep. um, and social media generally. And Linda has very, very uh, graciously offered and um, to come and be part of that, which is awesome. So that will be in person, but also yep. for our friends that aren't in Melbourne, the hashtag the visibility project, I'll make sure that you're part of a challenge leading up to the 30th where we start setting some um, some goals and, and get some media coverage about for, stream. yeah, yep. about um, doing a live stream on the 30th to essentially add your very best piece of business or life advice, just one really amazing thing that you're going to share um, so that it's just sort of one tip you know, yep. one one topic, one answer, really simple. Um, so that uh, I might actually—that's part of the challenge. Challenge, isn't it? challenge well, for anyone watching this today is to go and ask their audience what do they want to learn from me when yeah. I go live as yeah. part of the visibility project. Use the hashtag so Jenny and I can tweet and retweet it. Yeah. Um, when I go live for social World Social Media Day. Okay, so it is the thirtieth of June. Yes, there is such a thing as World Social Media Day. Um, it's pretty big. Um, So that is pretty phenomenal. So that one is a must attend, a must see, a must register for. Mm. As I said, Jenny's Masterclass is a huge one to get involved with as well. And then I can't remember the date of the press release. Um, 13th of July. 14th of July. Oh, that's terrible. But we're We're running how to run. (laughs) Watch my my Facebook page. Watch Jenny's Facebook page. How to write a press release will be... um, one of Jenny's co-working events. Uh, no questions so far, so I'm going to wrap up with what awesome. has been going this week. Jenny, thank you very much for joining us thank this you. week. Thank you. It's been great me. to see you. Our next skills webinar is with Clive. So Clive yeah. is coming to talk to you about taking away the fear of sales. Jenny, you've worked with Clive before. What would you be saying to people who need to be attending this webinar? Uh, I loved working with Clive. Um, he's a very he's so knowledgeable and so patient <laughs> he's very me for crying out loud he might not be patient with you sometimes with you I don't know but he certainly was very patient with me 
Um, and he, his wealth of knowledge about uh, sales conversations, actually not being about sales, just, yeah. you know, being really good listeners and, and really asking questions and really listening to what people say. And, and I learned a lot about, as a, as a talkative kind of human being, what, what it means to really shut up and, and really listen to, to what people say. Because I jump in because I think I know the answer really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really recommend everybody come along and learn from him. He's been, you know, in so many businesses and, and, and his sales skills obviously are pretty amazing. But just the way he communicates uh, when he's teaching is really, really fantastic. Fantastic. So he's coming in next week to talk to you about how to take the fear away from sales. So if you've been, if you think a sales call spammy, you think all of that sort of like I can sell because it's naturally what mm. I do. Um it's the talkative people in us. But if you are fearful about making a sales call, every business owner, no matter what you do, has to sell in some point or form. So please come and register for that one. Then we have got the amazing Karen Hollenbeck coming in and teaching us about LinkedIn. Oh, and yeah. How we can build the power of LinkedIn within our businesses. Both of these skills webinars are phenomenal and July spots are booking up. So, and I want to be aware, everyone, that we are not going to be running skills webinars in August. We have got the Bit Small Business Skills Summit, which is 10 days, which Jenny's a member of. Yay! Um, we're looking forward to it, um, getting it out there. So there is um, currently 42 presenters are locked in, but there's about 60 presenters we're going to have coming in and sharing with you some amazing knowledge and skills over 10 days. So we're going to focus on that one for the month of August. Uh, Megan, you are welcome. Thank you for joining us. Joy, you are very welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, I hope you've had a great skills webinar with us. We will be back same time next week. (laughs) See our call to action in live in action. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jenny. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, everybody. 